Okay, so I got a Taylor ice cream machine. They're saying it's not pumped. You hit the pump. Let's see. So here's how the pump works. You fill this can. Drop this. Remove the physical. There's a little overload button right here. Let's see if it's tripped. It is not. Okay, so. Not off mechanically, and we could be off on a pressure switch. Right, give me a second, let me get a better view of what we're doing. All right, so here's behind the curtain. They have a reset button on the outside when they press it. So this is tripped. When they press the reset button, you can see how it just all the way back. Now let's see. Nope, it hasn't reset yet. So I got it to reset. And now when I turn the pump button on and open this up, Right. So that was the interrupter problem, but I actually think it's going to be something bigger than that. Hang on. All right, so now this is running, the pump is working. When I put it in auto, I'm not going to do it. If I put it in auto, the compressor is going to start, the feeder is going to run, and then this is going to trip again. So with this tripping, I want to isolate. It actually runs the compressor. Uh, I'm sorry, not the compressor. This is doing the beater and the pump. So I grabbed the wiring schematic, which is over there. And after a nightmare of poking around, I found that I chased it back and the beater, if you look on the board, it says beater. So I'm gonna put my amp clamp on this and I'm gonna just tell it to turn the beater on. Watch for that. 25 amps, really? 25 amps, that's the beater motor, it's not running. So, that pulled way too many amps, that did its job and saved the day. We've either got a locked up beater motor or something. So, I'm going to make sure we're getting power and now we'll dig into the next one. Alright, so I pulled the motor loose and I just had somebody help me because it took three hands, but it's a three phase motor, so we got three legs of power coming in. So I put my meter on one and two and I had her start it. The motor was buzzing and I got 208. Uh, and then I put my meter on two and three and got 208. So that verifies we are sending the proper voltage to the motor and the motor won't start. Uh, you saw that the motor was pulling 25 amps. And this motor is rated for 4.8 amps. Yeah, that's what it should be running. SFA, uh, like the maximum amp load, 5.2, it's gonna shut down. And it was pulling 25. So that motor is dead, dead. All right, so we're back at the ice cream machine. We've got our beater motor. Um, numerically, it's identical. So I had the parts house match it up for me. And so again, the shaft length is the same, the diameter is the same. You can see the body in the motor is a little longer than that. We're gonna dodge a bullet. That may have been a problem here because the motor body comes right to here and he actually has a line set for the compressor. I mean, the compressor's right there. There's no moving this, but I set it in place and it looked like it actually just comes to the inside of it. So we're gonna be all right. Um, so we need to transfer the pulley over from the old motor. So we'll just Allen wrench that off. We'll note where it is on the shaft. Uh, we'll set it here, pin it down. They send a new locking pin. As you can see, it goes in that way. 
Uh, the wiring ran in the top of this and it was bladed terminals. One, two, three. The new unit, the wire is going to run on the side, which again is annoying because I'm going to have to run it. It's going to be tight, but at least there's still terminals. One, two, three. So I don't have to rewire anything. This motor is meant to be the direct replacement for that motor. It's just a different manufacturer. So let me get some more details in place and then we'll next step with it. After much adventuring, we did manage to fit this in here, although it was tighter than I thought. I did actually have to bend a little bit just to get that copper out. I couldn't risk it rubbing on the motor. Um, so we're good. I actually put this pulley on, right? I put the pin in, but I didn't tighten the set screw. What I mean by that is I didn't tighten that at first. So then, so we're back over here. We set this for amps. We hit wash. Let's see. All right, we're spinning. Two and a half amps. Beautiful. Then, because with this spinning, this pulley could move in and out, right? It could shift this way and that way. So, um, the force of it spinning aligned it properly, and then I just reached in and hit the set screw, and we're tightened up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put milk in it. We're gonna fire it up and let it run full bore for a little bit before I close it up, but should be good. All right, so. We got ice cream. Compressor runs, speeder runs, everything's good. You can see our pulley going. Right. I'm gonna close her up. Call it a wrap.